Best of mornings to you, traders. I hope you're all doing well this morning. Morning, Kay. Morning, Stel. Top of the morning to yeah. you, laddie. Top of the morning to you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? All good, mate. All good. It's Friday for me. I'm in a spiffy mood. <laughs> of course it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm looking out my window. I took the kids to school today. It was murky, grey, misty, drizzly. I looked at the uh, forecast in Spain. It's 27 degrees. <laughs> nice. I'm looking forward to some sun. I'm a bit like a lizard. I need sun on my back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Where are you off to, right? Recharging. Sorry? Where are you off to? Uh, off to um, uh, Fuengarola in mm. Spain. To my dad's place. He's got Very the, nice. Been out there. So, yeah, can't wait to that, get some stuff back. First, that, first that's family that, holiday abroad for four years. That's how the 1% live, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> No, enjoy, mate. Enjoy it. I know it's been a while, so uh, it's well deserved. And uh, yeah. you know, we're going to be here with Kay to um, pick up the pieces when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, there's not too much broken pieces on the ground uh, while I am. But uh, yeah, looking forward to switching off on the screens for a bit. Uh, but I'm sure I will be popping in now and again just to make sure you aren't breaking anything, you two. I know what you like while the cat's away. <laughs> nice. Anyways, let's get on with some work because there's still work to be done today. Um, and we're going to start over in sunny Japan. I think it's sunny. I'm just guessing at that fact. Um, and, oh, I don't know, a bit of a subtle change in language from uh, the outgoing sake drinker. Uh, Kuroda says he expects real wage losses to shrink, i.e. the gap between um, inflation and wages, uh, so that wages become positive. He says, well, wage pressure is heightening. Um, he also said, and this is a key comment, it may not come immediately, but Japan is closer than before to sustainably hitting 2% inflation target. Um, that's a bit of a change, eh, Kay? Yeah, now, <clears throat> now that he's like uh, days, away, <laughs> days away from uh, leaving the ship, he's, uh, he's preparing the terrain for his... Uh, Successor, right? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit of a change. Um, we also heard from uh, the two new uh, uh, deputy governors overnight. Yeah, those, um, yeah. the one was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I trust you are going to come to that. Uh, the one was, uh, let's say, um, talking along the same lines, and the other one was uh, is is definitely uh, an old uh, Kuroda mate. Um, keeping things uh, in check. But yeah, Kuroda, um, but they also saw the wages, right? We and, we and we know that the wages were a big thing. Uh, there's a report out like an hour ago or half an hour ago, uh, Fitch, saying that they expect the wages to, to rise a healthy 3.8%. That was like a number uh, which was touted before. Um, we, we got the other uh, results because when, when we had the the other results out of Japan, it was closer to three than 3.8. But um, yeah, Kuroda uh, is, is slowly preparing the terrain for his successor. Yeah. So on the, on that wages thing then, because uh, I can't remember, what was the last CPI? Was it 3.1% that, that Bank of Japan and the national CPI? Yeah, the national was there and the core was 2.7. Yeah. So if wages are going to go up 3.8%, that puts them into real positive numbers um, albeit you know we're talking marginal um, mm. but it's it's more a case of inflation coming down to below wages than wages going up above inflation um, which would suggest that if that happens and given the the nature of, of things how small things can lead to big things in Japan if they get real wage growth above inflation won't that bring inflation up behind it um well as we've already said, it's it's a case of uh, um, what what is pulling what, you know. Um, the wages have been a response to uh, they haven't virtually moved. Uh, real wages have been really going down for the past thirty five years or so in Japan. So it would be uh, it would be a case of uh, catching up on the rest of uh, on the rest of uh, countries. So uh, uh, we, yeah, I mean, in theory, yes, but uh, the. It's also a catch-up move, so 
got to be a bit careful. Um, is is the Japanese starting to spend all of a sudden uh, on on the back of it? I'm not sure. Uh, we can't forget that Japan, uh, the Japanese, um, is a saver, right? Um, yeah. Um, but it, but it 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 throws the window right open for uh, for the Bank of Japan to do something, right? Um, and and uh, and and I'm really thinking that if they don't use it now, it, it may be closing because if it, if the rest of the world is is starting to feel the pinch from uh, from higher interest rates, uh, they are not going to import inflation from the rest of the world. They are actually it's actually going to put uh, to push inflation back down. So. Uh, um, they 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 have to do something when when a way that walks in. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Um, just again over the other BOJ uh, deputies, as as Kay mentioned, uh, Uchida said it's hard to get markets to price in uh, a YCC adjustment early. Um, so potentially hinting at that. Um, he also said a tweak to YCC. Um, undoubtedly becomes an option if conditions are met, um, but that we shouldn't communicate any policy decision in advance. Uh, the BOJ won't rule out any option on future policy. And then uh, the other guy, Himino, said that uh, the BOJ must maintain ultra-loose policy to support the economy and lay the groundwork to, for firms to hike wages. Um, so, from those comments, and there's also some from Kashida, I'm, I'm flipped a bit now. I'm thinking maybe looking at uh, Schultz again in dollar yen to run into the uh, next BRJ meeting uh, because it does, as subtle as it may be, it does seem like, as Kay says, the, the, the window has been opened for the Bank of Japan to at least change their language slightly. No one's expecting them to turn up at the next meeting and say we're hiking rates in, in three months' time or anything along those lines. Um, but any switch, language change, word change that insinuates they may be moving away from easy policy is going to be big uh, for the yen, whichever shape it comes. Uh, but looking at Kashida, um, he came out saying he's aiming to narrow wage gaps between Japan and overseas. Um, and we've switched uh, arrows for pillars because he says wage hikes will be one of the three pillars of new capitalism. Um, he's aiming to draw up gui guidelines for steps, including wage hikes and reskilling workers by June. Um, so he still wants to go, you know, hammer and tong in getting wages up. Um, so, as I said, it's, it's feeling like more and more this snowball's gathering a bit of pace. Kay, do you think? And all round on this, this yeah, wage don't issue. Don't forget, Kishida is a politician. He wants wages to go to go up, uh, and if possible, more than elsewhere. Than elsewhere, um, he's he's a politician, right? And and uh, if wages go up, that will also allow them to uh, to to stop um, having to inject all those uh, all those uh, uh, stimulus plans, right? Um, so yeah, I mean he's he's obviously going to push for uh, for for wage hikes uh, as much as he can, and um, and it's also a fact that uh, um, if you if you push for wage hikes, you 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 actually make Japan a little bit more attractive again. This is is really yeah. I think it's that is a hundred percent the political game that he's uh, that he's playing uh, right now. Um, and, yeah. and, and trying to get more investment back into Japan, more uh, more workers back uh, back into Japan, because the the, the foreign companies um, the, the, uh, looking at Japan's inner uh, inner economy, what's to do in Japan is is um, has not been brilliant over the past uh, decade or so. Um, uh, it, 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 it had a kickstart uh, after the, the quake, but then it uh, waned uh, uh, a bit again. So I think that's more of a political uh, plea than, uh, than, than and an economic one. Um, they're really saying like, uh, oh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be all good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what these three pillars are. Is this the, the new three arrows? Um, it's not been had much of a fanfare. Um, three pillars of new capitalism. Is that something that they've just decided to uh, call the project, if you like? Or yeah, the project, that the yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, three pillars. Anyway, moving on and keeping to um, 
the data and inflation. Aussie CPI dropped more than expected to 6.8% from 7.1%. Um, that firms up pause rhetoric from uh, some of the banks and uh, market expectations. Um, but it, there's some weird stuff going on in these expectations. So um, Westpac said the CPI drop cements a pause in April. Um, RBC now sees them pausing in April, but then hiking again in May. Um, ANZ said the data shows ongoing strong inflation momentum, so still going for a 25 pip hike in the next meeting. HSBC um, says the decision next week, uh, and that's on the 4th of April, by the way, um, is going to be a pause. Uh, UBS reaffirmed that they will pause in April and then do a final 25 hike in May and then a cut in November. Um, Capital Economics um, say they will pause next week before hiking again in May. Um, gold is uh, still in the camp of uh, hike next week. Um, and City is now shifting towards a hold for next week. Current probabilities show an 86% uh, probability chance of pausing next week with a 25 hike the balance what's uh, what's going on with this uh, hike one month uh, sorry hold one month hike another still it's it's like a light switch who, who the hell knows I, I don't know it's um yeah Are they gonna I, hike I have no pause? answer sorry <laughs> yeah Are no I mean gonna pause I get. I guess that's taking it, uh, taking the slowing down to another level, right? It's, uh, um, you know, hike, pause, hike, pause. I don't. I. I. I don't know. I. Uh, it's one of the things I can't. Um, can't really explain. Um, well, I can't get my head yeah. it's, you don't, you, Central banks don't do that. I mean, I can understand if they've got big, you know, worries about the banking system, like uh, everyone else has has been looking into it. Um, you know, you could say maybe that's the reason behind it, but there's not been anything happening in Australia that would, would sense that. And we seem to be touch wood over the hump of all this banking worries. Kay, what do you make of that? Pausing and hiking again. That's a bit bonkers, isn't it? Isn't, it, isn't there some some um, <coughs> some worries or, or uncertainty around the, surrounding the, the housing market over there? I'm, I'm not... Uh, it, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. And... and um, if you if you still print six point eight percent CPI, um, but RBA has not been really. They, they were the first ones to hike, right? Um, when it all took off, but then they have never been really uber hawkish. They, they were hiking, 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 but never really been uber hawkish. Um, I I I really don't know uh, the answer either to it, mate. The market is is. The market is so fast in repricing everything uh, these days. It's um, sometimes uh, tough to follow. Um, I, I, I go with the majority and they they put it on hold, um, but also in line with all central banks. This, this, they are now just data dependent, right? So if this thing if this thing comes out a bit sticky, if the numbers are not uh, really falling out of bed. Uh, um, the, the real economic numbers, uh, they, they probably is room for for another one, and yeah, and I, I don't I don't really understand sometimes why the market is 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 pricing in such uh, such funny things. I'm and I'm I'm really putting it down to 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 hedging and and rebalancing flows and stuff. Uh, I think the bond books have been completely. Um, um, thrown around several times already uh, this year so and and in and past year yeah uh, guys one thing we have to remember and actually our friend uh, yeah. is uh, mentioning australia norway canada uh, norris bank did the same thing right they hiked in uh, in december and paused in january then hiked in march yeah. uh, i i think it has to do with um obviously with market uncertainty as well obviously the um in countries where inflation is not the 10% like the UK, um, they can maybe afford to take a breather and reconsider just in case markets go to the toilet. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, I, I don't have any other um, explanation for that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. And, you know, you'd expect some of the smaller banks to maybe, you know, do that sort of thing, but not someone like the RBA, you know, one of the, the perceived majors at well, it just seems strange in my mind. Um, I don't know. 
I don't know what they do. I don't know whether they hike at the next meeting. If they've got a reason to hike in May, surely that they've got the same reason to hike in April is my logic. But who knows what goes through these clowns' minds at uh, these times. Um, all we can do is, is trade it and trade what we see. Um, so, yeah, that's where Australia sits anyway. If the Fed go to something like that, well, you'd see bonkers in the markets, if you ask me. But uh, let's uh, let's hope what we don't. <laughs> Um, over to the UK, and we've had some uh, mortgage data, lending data out. Uh, mortgage approvals, um, beat expectations were up, had been sliding a while. So good to see some new year um, pick up there in February, beating expectations, as I say, there and higher on last month. Uh, mortgage lending, though, was down uh, or wasn't as strong as expected. Um, so could be that people are just taking out smaller loans for mortgages, uh, topping up that sort of thing. Um, the consumer credit data, um, 1.41 billion was borrowed on consumer credit, um, down from last month, but higher than expected. Um, keeping an eye on the credit card part of that, and 600 million was put on the plastic, which is just uh, half of basically of or just over half of what it was last month at 1.1 billion um so that um january number as i say it got marked with some good retail sales in that month so maybe there was some additional spending on the on the cards to do with that retail sales um, and that's pulled back in february and uh, much the same we saw with retail sales as well um but it takes a little bit of the uh red flag down a few notches um if we'd have seen another huge jump in credit card spending that would have maybe started to flag some stresses um among the population but down at 600 million um it uh, it takes some of the, the as i say the red flag down a few pegs um boe's bailey was out and uh, again he spoke and the pound didn't crater into a fiery abyss um should not be the norm that all debt bank deposits are guaranteed. Um, once you put a deposit guarantee in place, you risk starting a run when it comes to removing it. Fair point. Um, we see some evidence of tightening in credit conditions, but not critically. Um, it's in global markets are testing banks for weakness. Uh, again, he's probably got a, a good point there, as we've seen. Um, over to the ECB, and Muller said that their may be more differing opinions at the next meeting. Uh, we must still worry about upside inflation risks um, and underlying inflation is an area of concern. Um, there's probably room to raise interest rates. Um, one of the uh, bigger hawks, ECB's Casimir, uh, said we agreed we will not give guidance about the May ECB policy meeting, uh, thinks inflation is too high for too long. Core inflation will be key in nearest decisions. Uh, we should continue raising rates, possibly at a slower pace. Um, so that's a bit of a dial down from uh, one of the hawks. Um, and he also says there is a real risk banks will curb lending. Um, coming over to the US, and uh, yesterday there was some house price data, um, which was in the positive in the main. Um, the 20 city S&P came in uh, negative on the month uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis. Um, the national index, um, or the 20 city year on year, came in as expected 2.5% gain, but down from the 46 prior. Um, the national uh, number for the whole of the US came in at 3.79% year on year. Um, that was down from a 5.63% prior. Um, the FHFA number's out as well. Um, small up on the month, but again, the yearly number coming down as well. So. We were speaking about this yesterday, keeping an eye out for these numbers. If there are going to be tighter credit conditions popping up from all this bank stuff, it's going to be in house prices that you start to see it. Obviously, this is January data, so it doesn't have an impact on what's gone in the banks so far. Um, but it's already showing that uh, maybe the prices are starting to moderate somewhat in the US. Um, then we've got the US consumer confidence number, which surprised to the upside, was expected to dip to 101 um, from the prior number, came in a healthy 104.2. Um, current conditions in that number also improving to 100, and, uh, sorry, that came down to 151.1 from 152.8. Um, 
expectations rose to 73 from 69.7 um, and that all important one year CPI number um, came in at 6.3%. Um, that was would have been unchanged but the, the last month got revised down to 6.2 so it's actually a gain in inflation expectations there but only by a pip so not much uh, to take from that one. Um, in politics, uh, US House Speaker McCarthy said they're very concerned about where we are on debt limit talks. This is still the ongoing stuff, um, which will not likely come to a head until June, I think, um, which is when the current uh, standing measures expire and they've got to get a deal done. Um, so we're still in the uh, chest beating stage until we get probably uh, about two days before that deadline. Um, and some news on the Deutsche Bank moves last week. Um, Bloomberg reported saying that it was a single 5 million euro bet on uh, credit default swaps tied to Deutsche Bank that triggered the sell-off last week. One big trade was placed and that sent jitters through everyone else and everyone started wondering what uh, they knew that uh, they didn't. Um, Do we believe so that? 5 million, seriously? Uh, I do well. Uh, yeah, I can. I can actually because it 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 came out of nowhere. And but it's not a, it's not an illiquid market. It's it's a market that trades. And I, I mean, I don't I don't. Know. It might be true, but I just I, yeah. find it hard to believe. I don't know. I mean, if you suddenly heard that someone had slapped a, I mean, I don't know the sizes of bets people put on these things. But if 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 that five million is a big bet, um, and someone slaps that on in the midst of a banking crisis. You know, it doesn't take much to try and put two and two together, come up with five and think, you know, what do they know that we don't? And then everyone jumps on it. Um, yeah, but five million on, on CDS, I mean, it's just too small a number in my, my opinion. But then, anyway. Yeah, I, I say, I don't know. I don't know if that's yeah. a small bet or not. Um, but you know what markets are like. You've been, you've been in a game. If, if, you, if you see someone putting on a trade and think they know something we don't, you know the market always tends to follow and, and jump on it as well. Um, True. Ask, ask questions later, isn't it? Um, True. I anyway. just think that uh, the num the size has to be of some significance. It's 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 like me saying, you know, I'm I'm lifting offers in euro dollar in uh, you know hundred grand anywhere. It doesn't matter. We don't make any difference. Anyway, it's 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 okay. You know, it's just my opinion. I think it's uh, too small a number to make any difference. But, but is it is hmm? it is it an is it an options bet? Did he, did he, is it like a bet where they put like five million premium or so on the, on the table, or is it like a pure trade on CDSs, which uh, in in which case, uh, as Telio says, it's uh, insignificant. That's what they wrote yeah. that it was a CDS trade, a vanilla one. If it's an option, it's a different story, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if, if oh, okay. Yeah, just just a trade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, if options no. trade. If you put five million on the table to do to for for something, then I can understand that that, that market makers react to that. But um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyway, either way, it's Bloomberg reporting it, so you always take it with a pinch of salt. Anyway, um, but that's what they said. That's what caused uh, all the problems last week. Um, they are what they are. It's all in the rear view mirror. And uh, by and large, maybe we are over the worst of the, the bank stuff. Sorry, yeah. Estelle. I was just going to say, remember, who who are Bloomberg's? I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay, but I've seen a lot of things in my life. Who are Bloomberg's clients, the banks? If you're Deutsche and there is some kind of issue, what are you going to do? Are you going to make them write a nice little piece that uh, makes it sound like this was really nothing? Anyway, I'll take my tinfoil hat off. Let's move on. <laughs> 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 no worries, mate. No worries, mate. Keep it to hand, though, because uh, the market's full of old Tim Tim Vol hat. Uh, uh, I stories. have seen I've seen firsthand what banks can do, and uh, it's not pretty. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Um, right then, moving on. Um, Bidden says the banking crisis is not over yet, <laughs> so doing his best to calm the markets. Um, he says he's done what is possible for banks. Um, coming over to Canada, and they're going to be slapping some taxes down um, to bring in uh, some 3.2 billion Canadian dollars. Um, they're going to be treating dividends received by financial institutions um, from holding domestic shares as business income. Um, they're going to be hooking those that tax in over five years, starting in 2024. Um, so tax-wise is coming in on that side. 
that's all I have on the headlines. Uh, unless uh, you guys have scraped anything from the barrel that I've missed, feel free. No, sir. No, nope, nothing. Mm, no, not really. Um, Bank of England's uh, systemic risk survey results came out just uh, while we uh, when 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 we started the um, yeah. the show. So nothing really outstanding out of there. Banks are still uh, well capitalized. Um, a bit more nervosity second half 2022, but I think that that's still a result of uh, of of uh, trust in in, uh, in in a way and uh, and and geopolitics uh, being more nervous about geopolitics, but I think that's uh, that's a general thing. So um, no, not nothing really spectacular uh, coming out of there. Um, no, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, yeah. I... Yeah. Cool. Um, just look having a look at the data that we've got coming today. Not an awful lot. I don't think um, we've got uh, the MBA mortgage stuff just to keep an eye on there. Um, keep an eye on that mortgage rate as well, because it, it's going to show if there's been any real wobbles um, to do with uh, what's going on with the banks and stuff. Um, maybe it's hit activity as well. Some pending home sale data coming in later on, but otherwise um, pretty quiet. Um, one other piece of data, quite funny. Um, if you go and clear out all your shareholders and bondholders of your of your one of your biggest banks in your country, i.e. Switzerland, it's no surprise to see some of your economic uh, expectations dipping. <laughs> we should say dipping, collapsing. Um, the zoo expectations for Swiss came in at minus forty one point three versus minus twelve point three prior. Um, so as I say, it's probably a largely effect of what went on with uh, Credit Suisse on that one. Right, let's have a look. The Tokyo fix came and went last night. Um, and a uh, bit of a yen seller, AK. Uh, biggie, yeah. Quite a biggie. Uh, and and uh, it held uh, through whatever Kuroda and uh, um, the other guys, uh, Uchida, who is it? And uh, yeah. Mino uh, were saying. Uh, it must have been a, a, a pretty decent one, and that goes against what some um, well-known bank analysts were uh, were putting out, saying that they saw uh, the rebalancing being uh, yen buying for the uh, for the fiscal year end. So that's uh, one in the water. Um, but the, the year end is not over in Japan, right? Uh, what what are fixings? Uh, what, what fixings are concerned? They are going until the very last one of the. Uh, the fiscal year and this uh, this this year it's uh, it's the Friday, coming Friday. So until uh, the fixing in the Tokyo fixing in Friday, they will actively uh, rebalance whatever they need to do. So there may be some more uh, big figure moves uh, uh, upcoming in uh, in 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 Japan. So for the time being, just be uh, yeah be a bit careful if you have a yen risk on overnight uh, because you can find uh, the. The yen at a different level. Uh, the waking up the next morning. Yeah, I, I was uh, hoping that it might go the other way and we get a, a move yeah, further down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me but uh, you know, hope isn't a trading strategy. Uh, we only trade what the market does. But given that we had those comments from Kuroda and uh, Uchida, and yen didn't really react to it, is is what's getting me thinking that leaning more towards the short side um, if we get a decent rally. Um, because if if the month in stuff is swamping what the Bank of Japan is doing or talking about at the moment, um, there's a possible reaction trade into the new month when we really switch to uh, talking about what uh, Ueda does at his first meeting. Um, so I'm going to be looking for any uh, sky high moves we get in dollar yen. Uh, I'll be keeping an eye on that. I'm not talking about selling it around here or anything like that. But if we get a move, you know, maybe up to 133s, 134s, 135s, um, that's the sort of move I'll be looking for um, to, to maybe get into some shorts and see what the Bank of Japan do um, there on out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you know, this this month in stuff, it, it can flip either way. You know, we got a strong move in, in Tokyo. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to sell yen. We may get into the four o'clock fix and everyone wants to buy yen. So, you know, it's it's an open book, really. Um, I'm not 
I'm not here to, to pick a side right now, let the market do its thing. If it gives me levels to trade, I'll trade them. If it doesn't, I won't. Um, that's the, the long and short of it. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not here to guess what things may do, and I'm certainly not going to trust the uh, bank models. Um, but from here, you know, there's a bit of traffic through uh, 132s, but really for me, it's this 130, 132, 80, 90, 133 area. Um, that may be the next decent resistance points in uh, any of these end of month moves. If we get up there and can't get through there, um, that'll be a pretty good signal that uh, the month end is is hitting its head too far up here. Um, and then see what we want to do next week. Um, we have got the NFP next week. Um, it's going to be a bit of a funny one because it's coming on Good Friday. Um, uh, and are, really, US are they really yeah. going to, 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 to bring that out on a Good Friday? Yeah, because I, th I think the US is US stock markets are closed um, on fr on that Friday. I'm not sure what uh, that slightly means that bond markets are closed as well. Um, so I'm not sure why they why they're doing that. Um, I would have thought they might have punted it to the the week after, um, but apparently uh, it's scheduled in unless they change it. It's scheduled in, so that could be a bit of a funny one with uh, half the US closed and uh, most of Europe closed. Um, yeah. So when is that? Is that next week? Yeah. Yeah, next week. So when you're away, <laughs> yeah, I'm away. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in the bar watching it on, uh, on my phone. <laughs> and by the way, there's a few people asking, "Oh, what's happening? Where's Ryan going? He's just going on holidays for the next uh, eight or nine or ten days, whatever." So come, coming back after the, the end of next week, right? Yeah. I'll send you all a virtual postcard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah. So anyway, it, it, there's lots. You know, it's a funny week next week. Um, but you know, you never know what happens, but that's, that's next week. And I'll let you guys set up for that one. Um, and he's asking about, uh, Euro Sterling, um, Doji candles. No idea, mate. They don't factor into my trading whatsoever. Um, all I know from, um, this one at the moment is it's trudging around in the same old ground doing largely nothing. Um, so until we get a move either above 89 or below, 87 um this is just waffling around so i'm still long uh happy to be long while we're above 87 um if it does get under there i'm going to be uh a bit uh, worried that something has changed um but otherwise here in the middle not really interested um you know there have been scalp opportunities off this off this zone here which i've been pointing out forever been on my chart for forever um you know we get down there we hold it, we go through it, we hold it, we come back up, we hold it. Um, so if you're a scalper, this is a sort of price action that you're probably making good pips on. Um, if it gets above 82, 2030 or 2025, whatever you want to call it up here, then we perhaps get another move up to these highs here. But even so recently, it's not even looked like really wanting to trouble the 89s again. Um, and even if it does, it hasn't lasted long. So trade the range. We're a bit middling here at the moment. Um, that's the way I'm, I'm playing that one. Um, let's have a look at, uh, I'm not really looking at much at the moment. I'm not looking to take on too much uh, for going away. Uh, Dollar CAD finally had a breakdown um, through this 30, 50 area, I call it. Um, you know, tried several times at 50. Then it started nicking new lows, couldn't get through 30s. Then we've had the break. Um, hasn't had a real confirmation yet, um, but it's finding resistance, as you can see here, around about 36.20. Um, it was a pretty swift move down after that through the big figure. Um, down into the mid 135s is the next area to look for that one. Um, pretty decent uh, support and resistance area that we had on the way up. Um, prior level there so that was where i'm looking next for the price to potentially pull up um before maybe having a move down to the bigger zone down here at 135s 134 60s uh, which is a bit of a bigger zone down here um but if you're trading this one i know a lot of in our room like to play this on the long side i think if we get back up to test 30s and, and it confirms doesn't get through that's going to potentially indicate we're going to be heading far lower and we might get a move down to that, that 135 area uh, down there. Um, all else being equal, um, risk is still looking very positive. Dollar Mex continues to 
head lower um, and lower and lower and lower. Um, this was a really good risk proxy pair to watch uh, for that one. Um, dollar China still not doing an awful lot at the moment, uh, floating around this, you know, 86, 88, 89 level. Um, so not much going on there either. Um, it really is a case this week. <laughs> There's not looking like there's many trends. Um, you know, one minute yen's going one way, then it's going the other. One minute dollar's going one way, then it's going the other. Um, Euro dollar, that looks to be about the only one that uh, seems to have some sort of trend going on. You know, it's been a grinding higher since we had the, the, the Friday low, continuing to creep up, creep up, creep up, possibly end the month again. Uh, coming into to the facts on this one. What are you guys making of uh, Euro dollar? Does this smell end of month-ish to you? Um, good question. I would say the end of month flows um, probably going to be in um, a risk on, so, um, so equity is grinding higher, which um, theoretically should mean that uh, Euro dollar grinds lower, right? There's an inverse relationship. So I'm not convinced about the, um, the Euro dollar in terms of uh, month end flows. Um, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. If you ask me in terms of what I think is going to happen in the next, uh, you know, coming weeks, uh, I think uh, central bank divergence should theoretically push the Euro dollar towards 110. Um, uh, but as I said, if risk keeps getting bid, then that's going to um, keep a lid on things, at least in the short term. I don't know if Kay has any idea, but I I'm, I'm, don't have any any strong views on the euro dollar at the moment. Yeah, I mean, my, my only thought with the euro dollar is that uh, maybe it's a bit more yen led because, you know, euro yen's up as well. Um, you know, yen's been up uh, or yen pairs have been up. Uh, as well, so that could be a bit of a drag. Kay, what are your thoughts on on yeah, euro dollar? Think, the no, just just look at the euro crosses, mate. They 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 are still beat. Um, uh, it's end of month, end of quarter, end of fiscal year in Japan. So there's a there's there's potentially, uh, and as we've seen already on the Tokyo fixing, there's potentially a lot of rebalancing to do. Um, we're trading value date end of month, so. Um, I've already spoken about that in length and every month in, in our uh, in our trading room. Um, it's typically a day where uh, US corporates may have a bit of shopping to do. Um, so I'm going to be a bit cautious, but um, if you look at equity moves uh, over the, the course of the month, there may not be too much to do um, this month on, on, on the end of uh, on the rebounds, but uh, if you look at um, if you look at what happened uh, over the quarter, there may be some uh, some interesting moves. Um, the banks are saying that uh, there may be some dollar selling also going on, but then uh, uh, not a lot. Uh, Barclays said not a lot uh, will be will have to be done. The the worry for me on uh, or, or the the unknown for me on this end of month and end of quarter especially is those wild bond moves uh, how much do the uh, money managers uh, have to have to rebalance and hedge uh, due to those uh, wild uh, bond moves that that we have seen and that's uh, an open question it could get extremely messy in my opinion this uh, end of month end of quarter but um looking at how the equity markets moved i i'm going to say i would not be surprised if sterling is uh, is an is somewhere an outperformer for the end of month, end of quarter. Yeah. So more you mainly looking at there for cable, perhaps maybe a move up to that one, those 124 highs again. Cable, Euro Sterling, yeah. Um, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Euro Sterling, and, and and I'm I'm always talking. You know, it it is possible that. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it is going to to happen. I don't have uh, the the intelligent models uh, in, in place to exactly tell me what the flows are going to be. But uh, based on what I can roughly see, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Euro Sterling closed the month a bit lower. And, and yeah, why not cable back into the back into those 124s? But um, today may be a different story. And that's uh, we trade. I at least am trading the clock right now rather than specific uh, targeted levels. But it, Give me a cable somewhere in the mid 122s uh, later today. If uh, if that's the site, it could get interesting. Yeah, 
Well, if, if you're talking about uh, you haven't got your own models, you just need to pop down to Weymouth Beach, pick up some seaweed, mate, and hang it up in your shed. You probably have more success uh, reading the seaweed than these guys at the <laughs> banks with their, with their million dollar <laughs> models. <laughs> hey, it's not the weather to go down to the beach today. Huh? Wow. No, no. Yeah, so I'm just too. looking out of the window. It's miserable out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, this is the thing with 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 month end stuff. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the week, if you know we're not having any real big headlines coming out, there's no big problems with the banks dropping out. So we are likely to see maybe the month end having more of an exaggerated saying things at the moment. And it is a difficult time because you know you come into this week and you think right, well. You know, I'm setting myself up. I think the Fed are going to do this or the data is going to do that or whatever your your fundamental analysis is. And it just goes out the window at these, these times, um, as can the techs as well. You know, if someone needs to buy a ton of pounds at the fix today, it doesn't matter what fibs, whatever you've got there. Um, if it's 10, 15 pips away, it's going to just blast it out the window. So you've got to factor that into your trading. You know, don't rely on stuff right now. Um, the techs and stuff will likely reassert themselves after we, we finish the month end. But also remember, you can also get moves at the beginning of the month. Um, because just as people close off some books at quarter end, they re-imply or re-implement trades or, or put fresh stuff on first couple of days of the new month. Um, so you can also see some funky moves there, particularly at quarter half year year ends those sort of times as opposed to a normal month end so just don't don't trust anything at the moment you know if you if you get in a trade yep you have your stops in play you play your levels don't go offside and then be thinking oh what do i do now um okay i might hold it because it may come back trade your plan you know but just don't marry a position if you get some money on the on the table take it off you can half your position, take some position off, put some in the bank, move your stops down closer to break even or, or in a positive uh, uh, area and just manage your trades that way. And if they run, they run. Fine, you pick up your pips. But if they suddenly turn on you, at least you put some money in the bank and you've reduced how much you're potentially going to lose. Um, that's the only real advice I can give at this time of year. It, it's just funny. Um Okay. And the opposite, and the opposite yeah. is equally true. If uh, if it is due to month end and quarter end uh, fixings that the market goes massively your way, don't forget to take profits. Oh yeah, definitely. Don't never look that gift horse in the mouth. Um, yeah, and then, but you also you have to look at what happens after month end. So you know, let's say cable blows to one twenty six on or over the next couple of sessions and around the fixes, you've got to look at that and think, well, there's no fundamental reason why cables blown to 126 so maybe it's really moved itself out of sync with the fundamentals and that's where you look at your opportunity because then you can think well, well this must be a definite short then and you you know obviously plan your risk um but look for excessive moves um on these sorts of things as well because they're just as as much good opportunities as well yeah. um Ali, I thought, uh, Ali, thought Ali, were, yeah. were you not online uh, five minutes ago we did ryan did reply on Euro Sterling, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't watch, I don't follow Doji's um, and all those funny hangmans shooting stars, whatever. Um, far too weird for me. It goes in the witchcraft basket, like head and shoulders. Um, Kay, do you want to have a little look, or Stell, did you want to have a little look at anything? Whatever you guys want. Yeah, I can, I can go off. I'll, I'll take a look tomorrow when you're away. Um... Ryan, okay? Yeah, no worries, mate. No okay. worries. All yours, Kay. The football gets passed to you. Okay. Um, well, first of all, the, the short, um, <clears throat> quick look at those uh, short-term uh, short uh, term yields, right? Um, yesterday, I was talking about this uh, 404, 408 zone in uh, in, in the twos. Um, it it went above just a little bit but uh this morning we are um we're trading back below um i'm not sure whether there's a lot of rebalancing to be done in uh, in uh, bonds as well for the end of quarter i can imagine there will be so um expect some volatility around this and and pick this level again up 
once the month is over, I'd say. Um, it also has to do a little bit with the weakness of the dollar uh, uh, this morning, I reckon, uh, apart from what we are seeing on the, on some euro process. Um, so be aware of what's happening here because it, it can drag the currencies around if it's due to these bond rebalancings um, as well. So um, just just keep an eye on those on those things because they, we, we could see moves uh, out of there. Um, on um, euro dollar, then we were watching in the room. We were watching this sixty one point eight here, which uh, capped the debates yesterday on several occasions. And this morning we are moving through. Uh, we, we we're trading one away at sixty. I I think it's um, end of month as well in uh, in euro because it's a little bit of an overlay of what we saw yesterday. Um, it, it it euro was creeping up during the European session, then had a little bit of an extension and then stopped uh, in, in the US session. Today, um, we seem to have an overlay of, uh, of it, um, because if you look at the Euro Aussie, for instance, um, Euro Sterling went up just a little bit, but Euro Yen is, is, is trading higher as well. Um, we are in end of month, end of quarter territory, and I can't repeat it very often enough. I mean, there will be flows out of nowhere um in in the in from now uh, until until friday afternoon um but the 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 global the global picture um still looks like a recovery one here in euro and if we would see a move back down to uh let's say already want to wait the figure but uh um more importantly i think in into the mid uh into the mid 107s um that could be somewhere a springboard to to start April um, on a on a better footing. Don't forget that uh, underlying um, to everything that's happening now, the ECB is still uh, a bit more hawkish than the uh, than the Fed right now, and the numbers are not really falling out of it. So be a bit careful with uh, with this euro. Could get a bit volatile today since we're trading value uh, value date month end, and then. Uh, the next couple of days um, will probably be telling for what we are doing into Montent. Um, yen, then, yeah, dear, dear, dear. It held around 130 and a half again. And today, uh, people are watching this, this as a bit of a as a bit of a head and shoulders and uh, trying to break the shoulder line. But also, we are seeing this uh, downward channel. Um, depending on which. If you take the first high over over this one, it's already broken through 131. Uh, well, today it's it, it downsloping pretty fast. So yesterday this was uh, around, and on Monday it was around 131.60. Yesterday it capped here around 131.30. Today we threw, but then there's another one here. If you take the second one, uh, which is comes in around where that. Um, neckline or, or or trend line, let's call it the trend line is uh, around 130, 180. We're trading right around there. Um, keep an eye on what's happening, uh, uh, perhaps at the close of the day uh, to, to, to decide what you're doing. Uh, 130, 160 is as well a bit of a level, um, but I'm not going to make too many bets on what's going on in, uh, in yen. Until the end of the until the end of the month, um, I may have a few uh, quick steps. If uh, running into an hour or running into a fixing, it's pretty obvious what's uh, going on. But uh, um, trading the clock rather than trading the direction for me uh, is is going to be uh, the word. And until the end of the month, in, in most instruments, by the way. Um, well, Cedric, yeah, is it advisable to stay on the sideline if you're not in the market until the end of Q1? Of course. I mean, it's it's um, speaks for uh, uh, oneself, I, I would say, unless if you have uh, put on a, a more medium term or longer term plan, and you and you you get the move into the direction of your of your plan. Let's say, for instance, just just as as a as an example. If you if you say oh I think uh, euro dollar at one ten is going to be capped, um, if you have a global plan in place and and the fixing uh, the fixings for the end of month the rebalancing flows for the end of month take it to to one ten for no other reason than that that is going 
to be to, to be a good uh, a good opportunity to put your plan into motion right but if you're not having any any idea and if you're just watching the markets and 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 or if you are an intraday um um trader and and having absolutely no 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 clue right now it's it's a very good uh, it's a very good idea to stay on the side and see where the moves are taking taking the market because standing on the side doesn't mean that you don't do anything right it, it's always a good opportunity when you're not really trading much to 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 study what's going on read up a little bit on news read up a little bit on articles um uh, of research or so and then uh, make your plans there's always plans to to be made um but yeah i mean if you if you don't have an idea about what's going on staying out is, is actually a very good strategy um then to continue on uh, on on the yen because there are um no, that's the wrong one. To continue on the end, because there are a bit of moves going on in, in the yen crosses, especially. Um, I already showed this the, the sterling yen and this euro yen in the room a couple of times. We are again at a, at a crossroad here, uh, turning around the 143, the figure. But what we've seen is that this triangle has been pretty well respected. We've had those on the, on the European banking rules. We had this move lower, but it's a very, very, very good uh, good triangle to 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 pay close attention to and we are like at, at a bit of a crossroad here this is uh, i call it shibuya crossing because it's been uh, traded it's been respected but it's been crossed a lot of times we've traded around there a lot of times so i think this is an interesting one to to keep an eye on for where we close uh, today because the, the 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 moves deriving from this may be decisive for exactly going into uh, into month end. Either you're going to for a retest close to 145, which is possible, or if we if we start to see flows on the other side again, we it, it may be a, a failure and and call it 142.70 or so. Uh, a, a decent failure may uh, may bring back closer to 140. So um, I'd say pay a bit of attention to what's uh, to what's happening here. And we see it as well, and I already showed this one a couple of times as well. We see it on the on the sterling end. Sterling end is trying to break, but um, I'd say um, when when you break out of, of stuff like that on on month ends, on specific events like like we had uh, um, before, watch out for false false break. So I would I would rather keep these uh, one sixty those low one sixty threes in in mind as well. But in line with what I think uh, personally on, on, on the sterling right now, I, I'm not a sterling bear right now. And um, sterling may have a bit of legs. So if I see anywhere a move which uh, which come, brings it back down to the mid middle of the of this range, we have seen it hold here around this, this fib line. Um, I'm going to be interested perhaps for picking some up for, uh, for the close of the month uh, to, to really have a drive higher. But uh, for the time being, I'm just observing this. Um, yeah, the euro sterling, as Ryan already said, it's uh, it's a range. We're in a channel. It's 80-10 uh, or 80-15 or 80-20, 75-20. You, you just uh, call it as you like. 5-10 uh, pips outside of the 80-10 um, range. But we're in a slow, uh, slow downward channel and as I as I already said um looking at what happened on the on the equities uh FTSE and stuff compared to the rest I'm just saying um, um I would not be surprised if sterling ends the the the, the month on a on a positive note um just saying I would not be surprised and um we're seeing that sterling is trying to break the past uh, the past few highs um here I'm not going to 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 jump onto this one uh, because we are trading today. We are trading right now, um, but keep an eye on where the close is today. If ever uh, for some reason we're getting back down to mid 122s, I'm um, I would be um, getting a little interested. I think uh, in 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 here just because of this idea that I think that uh, sterling may close the month on a positive note. Uh, of course, we are going to be watching towards the close, this 124, 124 and a half again. This is where it plays ball or not, right? Uh, the cable, it's it's been 
it's been a very, very, very uh, big level um, over starting in December, really, uh, all the way back to December, it's been a big level. So that for the cable. Um, quick look on what's happening in the metal sphere. Gold is holding this trend line. I said yesterday, we are, we are undecided in this 1940, 1960 zone, but it uh, it decided to hold uh, the, the trend line here around in the low 1940s. So that's a good signal. Um, I'm not going to bet too much on what's going to happen in two months or so, but if you look at um, how it really responds to what's happening in the, in the, in the yield sphere, it's pretty pretty quick to, uh, to respond. So that tells me that if there is any any more dollar weakness or so in two months end, we could see a retest of, uh, of this one. Um, 1940, that's your danger zone, call it 3540. Um, 1940, that's your danger zone now. We start to get back below, you know where your risk is, I think then then we're going back to 1900. But in the meantime, got to respect those, those 1940s. Um, silver is holding pretty decentness uh, as well. Um, keep an eye on what's going on here uh, in the in the 2330s. And on the bottom side, it did hold those uh, 2284s twice. Um, so that's your uh, that's your range to watch there. I'm still in my long term long still as well, uh, but I'm holding off until the end of the end of the month. Um, even if I miss a little bit of, a, of an up move, I. But if it goes down for the reason for the only reason of uh, of month end, I'll, I'm going to look to uh, re-enter. Um, anything else? Is there anything else you guys want to watch? That we'll watch specifically. I'm just going down through the comments. No, I don't see much. I don't see much else, right? No, not a lot going on. Uh, that was great. Thank you, K-Man. Yeah, All cheers, mate. then back to you, right? Thank and you very much. Happy holidays, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Um, and, yeah, I just want to repeat what Kay said. You know, uh, you know, Cedric has asked, if you're not going to trade, you can do some planning. Um, you know, one of the things to look at is we speak a lot about the fundamentals on this show. You know what central banks should be doing right now. So if you get any moves that pushes the price out of sync with those fundamentals that are obviously going to be more lasting in the market, um, there's your there's your trading opportunity. And you, that's what you should be planning for. Look for those extremes, as I said earlier. Anyway, thank you, Kate. Thank you still for your valued input um, and have a great time while I'm Sipping pina coladas, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> nice. By the pool. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a photo every day. <laughs> you can't talk, Stel. You you spend most of your time at the beach anyway, so you know. That's rumors. We, it's not true. That rumors, is true. Actually, yeah, that is yeah. true. I've seen the photos, <laughs> the boats and water skiing. Yeah, you know. yeah. No point in uh, trading if you're not going to enjoy it. The spoil of it. Wise so, words, mate. Wise words. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Do have uh, a great time while I'm off. Make loads of pips. I want to hear you all going on holiday after making tons of pips. And uh, you can buy us all an ice cream. Thanks, Kay. Thanks, Dale. Uh, see you all in a couple of weeks. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.